Hey, what's up? What's up, guys? Yeah, so previously, uh, yeah, welcome to my uh, YouTube video. Yeah, so previously, uh, we already talked about uh, a famous theorem in the gamma function, uh, which is called the Bohr uh, model hop theorem. So this theorem says that uh, if a function uh, from real satisfies three properties, uh, f x plus one x times f of x, f one is one, log f is convex, then f must be gamma function. Okay, so this is like the real characteristic of the gamma function. Okay, so in this video, uh, let's talk about uh, uh, another theorem, uh, which is uh, characterize the gamma function of the complex video, uh, sorry, complex function. Okay, so this is called, uh, uh, okay, so yeah, so this we, I mean, I don't know how to pronounce, it. sorry about this. Okay. And I think this is from this is from a paper that uh, yeah. So I will post the paper link uh, below. Yeah, but basically I will follow the the first two pages of that paper and uh, prove the complex the generalization and uh, not generalization the complex characteristic of gamma function. I hope you guys subscribe to my channel. Okay, so uh, let me just quickly uh, tell you the results. Okay, so the results that uh, I'm gonna to prove in this video is the theorem says that. Uh, Let's say if every f z f of z is holomorphic, and uh, in the right uh, right uh, right half plane, so in the right half plane, right half plane, a right so right half plane. Uh, yeah, so this right half plane means that. Uh, yeah, so this just means that all the complex number, which the real number is greater, uh, real part is greater than zero. Okay, so if you have a uh, holomorphic function, uh, let's say on this region, and uh, satisfy the two properties, the first property is uh, the common gamma function property. The second is that uh, f of z is bounded. So bounded on what? Bounded on a strip, which is uh, all the complex number. Uh, with the real value uh, less or equal to one and uh, less two, okay? Then your f of z is uh, uh, a times gamma z, uh, where uh, a is f of one. Uh, yeah. Okay, so this is the theorem. So basically, uh, I mean, if you add the third condition such that the f of one is one, then uh, basically you just prove that your f of z must be gamma function. Okay, so yeah, so only these two are uh, only these two are non-trivial. Okay, yeah, so this is like the the complex uh, complex version of the uh, the Bohr monopole. Okay, uh, yeah, so let's go to a proof. And in order to prove it, let me just uh, quickly uh, use a lemma. So this lemma is uh, important. Okay, so this lemma is uh, important that uh, somehow like the starting point. Okay, so lemma says that, uh, let's say, uh, suppose you have a function which is satisfied these two properties, f of z, uh, and the, uh, sorry, if satisfy the first property that f of z plus one and z f of z and f is holomorphic on A, on a, a right half plane. And uh, yeah, by induction, right, you can get this, you can get the following. So uh, now uh, there is a fact that uh, we are going to show is that every uh, every function f holomorphic on A and uh, satisfy that let's say satisfy this is one satisfy one admit a meromorphic function meromorphic uh, I should say meromorphic extension f. Let's say f hat to come all the complex number, and uh, f hat is holomorphic, so it's meromorphic uh, on the, all the complex plane, right? So it's holomorphic under some uh, complex and ma uh, ma some points. Uh, by definition, I think everyone knows about the answer, right? So all the uh, like the integer, okay, and uh, so minus n is a pole of f hat, and uh, with residue. Minus one to n f of one n factorial. 
Okay, so uh, obviously that if you put f one to be one, then you know this is gamma function, the famous gamma function residue. Okay, so the proof is very simple. So this proof is almost trivial, right? Because let's say you use z hat to be z plus n plus one, then by definition, right? By definition, you can define uh, f uh, f z hat. You can define f z hat. Uh, uh, sorry, you you know the f z hat is f of uh, z. Uh, let's see. Uh, z z plus one up to z plus n minus uh sorry z plus n. So basically, that means that whatever points, right? So suppose your f of z only define on these, and the uh, right you only have on uh, uh, define on the right half plane, and uh, you want to extend this in, into f hat, right? So suppose you want to e evaluate this minus one point five, right? You, then you can add one and add one. Then the then you uh, you arrive point point five, and f of point five is well defined, right? So basically, you can use this shift to shift all the all the points, right? So you can define the right. So uh, you can define f of z. So if z is less than zero, you can define of z to be f z hat z z plus one up to go to z plus n, right? So for large enough n. So you can you just choose large enough n such that uh, uh, z plus n plus one z hat is greater than zero, then by definition you you already get the answer. Okay, but this definition fails when uh, right. So now you see, and then this is holomorphic, right? Because this is holomorphic function divided by the holomorphic. So uh, the only problem is that uh, there uh, when z is negative integer, then the, this guy will be zero, right? So you know the answer. Okay, so now uh, this f hat is well defined. So f hat is well defined, and uh, the uh, the pole is only on this negative integer and a zero, and you can easily compute the residue, right? So if you times, let's say, uh, you times f of hat of z times z plus n, then it become limit z goes to negative n, f z plus n plus one and uh, z z plus one da, 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 z plus n minus one and uh, easy to see that uh, when z goes to minus n right this is f of one this is a uh, unfactorial and then there's a minus one to n okay yeah so this is the rest okay so this theorem is very simple that you just you just uh, shift and uh, you can define another function called f uh, uh have have hat which this f hat will be f of z in when this when it is positive and it's, ne it's negative then you just satisfy it you just define uh, as this relation okay and then it has a pole on the zero and a negative integer and uh, it has a residue okay then now uh i think we are able to prove this uh, theorem yeah so let's go to the proof go to the proof go to the proof Okay, so uh, oh sorry, there's a lemma too. Let's quickly uh, go through. This is very easy. So by definition, right, your gamma of z defined to be this. Okay, and uh, your you can easily show that uh, your gamma of z absolute value is less or equal to gamma of real number z. Uh, for uh, z belongs to a. Okay, and this is very simple. Uh, if you because if you take the absolute value. Then uh, I think for this guy uh doesn't matter for this guy doesn't matter so I mean yeah so you can easily show that if t uh z minus one take absolute value should become a t real z minus one right so easy to show okay okay I think now uh by the previous two lemma then we can uh start to prove this theorem. Yeah, so let me just write down everything. So let f, uh, let f of z be a holomorphic function. Let's say be a hollow uh, on a right half plane. And uh, uh, with two properties. The first property is this. And the second property is f of z is bounded. Bounded, uh, bounded uh, on, uh, let's say, s, which is all a complex number. Or a complex number, uh, SO2 and uh, greater than greater or equal to what? 
Okay. Uh, and we want to prove we want to prove that uh, this f of z is just the uh, a times the gamma function. So f of z is just a times the gamma of z, uh, where a is uh, f of one. Okay. So the proof uh, goes follows. Let's define f to be uh, f of z minus a gamma of z. So this is small f, right? So and I and I, by definition I know that f z plus one is the f of z and i know notice that f of one is f of one minus f of one gamma one which is a zero so now uh, since f one is zero right so by our previous results that all the residues is all is basically zero right so which tell you that uh, you can def you can extend this f to an entire function which is now f hat is entire and the f and have hat will be the same uh, when restricted into the when restricted into the uh, right half plane. Okay, and I know that by definition your f my definition uh, f uh, restricted on s is bounded. Okay, so you can easily extend it into proving that f is actually bounded on uh, s zeros, which is all the uh, uh, points which. Uh, on this first strip because you can shift it. Yeah, so this is the easy exercise for you to check this guy's bounded. Right, so you just shift. Uh, you just shift from f to f hat, and let me just quickly tell you the reason. Because you know that f of z is f of z plus one divided by z. Right. So let's say, uh, let's say for image z equal to equal to one, then this guy is bounded. Right, because you already know that fz plus one is bounded on this s, so you can shift it goes to you can shift it and it goes to s zero. Okay, and uh, for image z less or less than one, and you can easily uh, do it by the lemma that we just mentioned. Okay, so now the final step is very strange. Let's consider the in s of z, which is f hat of z f hat one minus z. Okay, so this guy is entire. The reason is that these two f of z and f one minus z is entire, and also uh, this is bounded. This is bounded, right? The reason, uh, let's say, so f of z is bounded, f head of z is bounded uh, on s zero, and also f head of one minus z is bounded. Uh, let's say uh, uh, on s zero. Uh, the reason is that what the reason is that uh, this uh, so f of z is bounded, right? And f of z is the uh, same as f head of z except for zero, but for zero you define it as zero. Okay, and uh, and you know that by definition your f of z and the f of one minus z takes the same value, right? So actually they are the, they are uh, they are the same, right? So you know that f of z is uh, entire and bounded. on uh, S0, okay? And I know that, I also know that F of hat Z plus one is uh, Z F of hat Z. And I noticed that F of hat one minus Z is minus F of hat one minus Z divided by Z. Okay, so now uh, from these two, uh, we, I can get, I can get what? I get the S of Z is, so ever let's say I get s of z plus one. Uh, so now let's see. Right, so you uh, your f of z plus one is basically f hat of z plus one, and f of uh, hat of uh, one minus z plus one. Right, so it's minus z. Yeah. So this uh this is by the uh yeah, so if you times this you get the minus s z right. So now it's very amazing. So now you, you get that what you get that s of z plus one is minus s of z. But you prove, but you already know that uh, s of z is bounded on s zero, right? So that means on this 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 part, on this part, your f, s of z is bounded. Right? But then you prove that z plus one is negative s z, right? So basically, you can shift. Right, so that means in this part you are bounded, and this part you are bounded, and this part you are bounded, bounded, bounded. So you get the S of Z is bounded on all the complex plane, right? 
But you know that the the theorem of the Lubinier tell you that the bounded constant function only about uh, bounded uh, entire function only has oh, only only be constant, right? So f of z is constant by Lubinier. Right, and uh, if you don't know the Lubinier theorem, then I can post the uh, I will post the proof link below. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that means s of z is constant, right? So s of z is the same as s of one, right? For uh, for one, right? So it's f of uh has one minus f of uh one minus one, right? So I think I think. So. Right, and by definition, your f of uh, um, zero, right? So that means your f hat of z, f hat of one minus z is zero. But but you already know this guy, right? You know that these guys are just just a z times negative f hat of minus z. So you say that f of z is zero, or uh, for every z, you know, complex number, or uh, or you get f hat of minus z. I mean, I mean, if it, I mean, if z is zero, then by definition, your f of zero is already zero, right? Because if you if, because since you're you extend it, right? So your f zero is zero. So you get f of head of z zero or head of minus z zero, right? For every z belongs to z, but these two are the are the same are the same uh are the same uh, statement, right? Right? Are, are exactly the same statement because you just reflect z to minus z. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so no, which implies okay, and there's no page. So which implies that f of z is zero for every z belongs to a complex number. So that means what? That means uh by our condition that uh this guy is zero, right? So which proof that uh, your f of z is the a times a uh, gamma function c. Okay, so I'll see you guys. Uh, that's a proof. Okay, so see you guys next videos.